Hey everyone, and welcome to Developer Tea. My name is Jonathan Cottrell. I'm your host, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dan Denny. This is, of course, the second part of the interview. If you missed the first part, make sure you go back and listen to it. We talk all about HTML email. So if you are writing HTML email, that particular episode might be of great value to you. Uh, Dan happens to send out HTML emails to about a million addresses when he presses the send button, so he knows what he's talking about. And in fact, Dan is creating a course on HTML email, building HTML emails, uh, and that course is for Code School. And in fact, that's where Dan works. So uh, he's he's writing these HTML emails for Code School, and he's creating a course on Code School about HTML emails to teach you how to do that. So go follow Dan on Twitter, and uh, you can watch out on my Twitter on at developer T uh, to see any more news about when that course actually goes live. But in this episode, we actually talk about uh, a little bit about the conference that Dan began and organized uh, called front end design conference. And uh, Dan shares some memories from that and also gives you a little bit of advice. So I hope you enjoy the second part of the interview with Dan Denny. A few years ago, um, well, first of all, let's talk about something for a second. You and I actually worked for uh, Fuel together for a little while, uh, and I, I remember very little about <laughs> about that part of my life because I was in college. Um, so Dan and I have known each other for a while, and it's interesting to me. I, I heard, I listened to Shop Talk, and I heard you say that in back in two thousand nine. Um, you were basically, you were convinced that you weren't going to be able to contribute a lot to, um, to the industry in terms of code, like in terms of open source and that kind of stuff. And so instead you decided to create a conference, (laughs) which to me, I feel like it takes a lot of guts to, to step out and say, you know what, I I'm new to this industry, but I'm going to create what ended up becoming one of the leading conferences uh, for front end development called Front End Comp. Um, so, I, first of all, that's awesome. I, and I think that's just such an inspiration because a lot of people who are just starting out have no idea what to do uh, and they do feel like their code is going to be subpar. So, thank you for creating Front End Comp. Uh, I'd love to hear a story from you about. Uh, about front end conf, maybe one of the coolest moments that you experienced while you were uh, leading that. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> so there are there are a lot. If I had to, if I had to divvy up, I mean, I could probably like do a whole show on wonderful moments from front end conf because I've just met and uh, had so many wonderful experiences with people throughout the years. Um, but I would have to say it was actually. And the the last one in Portland, and that was when we were shutting it down. The response was just so huge. And Matt Graham and the people at uh, Sparkbox got together and put together a site um, basically as like a front-end thank you. And this was to thank us for having run the conference for all these years. And it was attendees and speakers and everyone got together and created this site. It was like frontendthanks.com. And it was just amazing. Like it was my wife and I were both uh, like hit hard really emotionally with that. It was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember seeing that actually when it came out. And that's just such a cool moment because, you know, I, I think we forget that the web development community, it's big, but it's not so big that we, we can't all kind of be friends, you know, (laughs) Very true. there's a lot of people that are, uh, that are connected quite personally. And so, you know, if, and that's another thing about, about the front end conf story from you starting out, you reached out to people who were kind of like giants in the industry I'd love to know kind of how that process went because you're coming in brand new and, and, you know, I think a lot of people who are new in this industry, it's very difficult to gain confidence because it's not typical. We don't have a regular like climbing the ladder ability in the, in this industry. You know, it's hard to place yourself. It's hard to know where you fit. And so how was it when you first started contacting uh, these people that are considered kind of the giants of the industry? So I had been 
learning from everybody for a year, and I had my list of regulars, you know, shows that I listened to and uh, sites that I visited regularly. And it was one of those things that I was new enough still that I just didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it was just a matter of, it, was, it came in a couple of tiny wins. So the first win was, it was crazy, but you know, like the community was smaller then. And like Chris Coyer was actually following me and like that, it didn't make a whole lot of sense in 2008, but there was all these sites where you could follow, you know, the other web design people in the community. Sure. And so he was following me and I had seen him share that he had just talked to a classroom, a high school classroom in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And so it was right around the time that I was thinking about doing this. And so I DM'd him and I was like, hey, I saw you talk to a classroom. If I put together a conference, would you be interested in speaking at it? And so I had my list of other people that I wanted to do, but him responding in a short you know, time and then also being very positive about it, that was it. It was just like, now it has to happen. I have to make this. <laughs> yeah. And Chris was on the show and it, he is... I mean, I was, I felt the same way when I first had Chris come on developer T, you know, it's like, he's very responsive and just a very awesome guy. I think he's representative though, of a lot of people in this industry who are open to communicating with, with younger developers or, uh, they're open to things like this, like you coming on the show. It, I mean, you just directly responded to me. It was really cool to have that ability to reach out to people and it's kind of an an interesting different kind of industry you know i think i think in other industries like if you were to try to reach out to i don't know like a new york times bestseller author you're going to get most times you're going to get like a secretary responding and saying that they have no time for you you know and that's just not the case apparently in this industry maybe some are that way but as far as i've experienced web developers are relatively approachable. Oh, absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget that a little bit because you might get a little bit of the, you know, like web celebrity vibe or something like that. Or, you know, it just seems like that, but they're truly not. All I meet all of the time at meetups and conferences are very approachable people who are just human. They're just like us. And yeah. like when you're talking to them, they're just as nervy, nervous just for the reason that they're talking to another geek in a room, which is just a really cool thing. Yeah, we're all in this together. I, you know, I, I had a, uh, I hope this guy's listening. I had a guy reach out to me on Twitter and give me a, a pretty harsh critique uh, today about confidence. And he was saying that uh, basically that he didn't enjoy listening to the show um, because everybody seems kind of timid. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of like that. I actually like that we're all uh, sort of tiptoeing in some ways, but we're really confident in other ways. Like when I sit down to write code, I'm totally confident in that code. I have no problem showing it to people. I have no problem actually sitting down with another developer and explaining it. And I think that's, that's kind of an insider's club, right? Like not everybody can do that. Yeah, we all have very, very different skills. And that was like one of the things that I, you know, was able to contribute back with the conference because I was not and still am barely at the, the level that I can contribute regularly back to the community. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think that you're going to be contributing pretty significantly with the course on HTML email. Uh, I know I'll be interested in seeing what it's about. I know that it, it's probably more mostly for people who haven't done much of HTML email to begin with, but I'm assuming that Code School is a great place to go, uh, not only for beginners, but also uh, relatively seasoned developers to learn new things as well, especially if you're looking to learn a new language. Uh, Code School will allow you to learn in the browser. Now, just to be completely clear, Code School is not sponsoring <laughs> Developer T at all. I'm not like trying to pitch you guys because I'm getting some kind of kickback right now. Uh, but I, I really do think that that idea of lowering the barrier to entry, we talk about learning on this show a lot. I think that one of the most important parts to learning is the actual step to get started. So once you are sitting with a code editor in your face and you're ready to learn something, that is a, a prime position to be in. And the faster you can get there, the better. And I think Code School is a great way to get there very quickly. Would you agree? Yes, very much so. 
Awesome. Well, Dan, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being on the show. I have one more question for you. Shoot. If you had 30 seconds to spend with a developer, whether they are a beginner uh, or if they're advanced in their career, what would you tell them uh, to, to help them become a better developer? Do lots of work. Do lots of work. Yes. And that doesn't even take 30 seconds. That's five <laughs> seconds. That's three seconds. Yeah. That would, that would be it. Just do lots and lots of work. I think that's a good theme that we can, uh, that we can pick up on. And it's, it's coming through, through most of our guests, uh, do lots of work, build websites. As Chris Coyer says on yes. shop talk, build lots of websites, get out your code editor and edit code. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, they ask these questions. How do I become a better developer? The number one answer every single time that you're going to hear on developer T is do the work, get out your code editor and edit some code. Dan, thanks so much for your time. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And thank you for listening to Developer T. This has been my interview with Dan Denny. Of course, if you missed the first part, make sure you go back and listen to that. Dan shares a lot of great information about HTML email, uh, which he has a course on. And uh, if the course has released by the time this show comes out, I'll put it in the show notes. But if not, make sure you follow Dan on Twitter, uh, as well as Developer T on Twitter. That's at Developer T. I will definitely be posting a link to Dan's, uh, to Dan's course on Code School. If you're enjoying this show, please consider leaving a review in iTunes. Uh, that's the best way to help other developers just like you find the show. My goal here on Developer T is to provide value to you as listeners. Uh, I want to help make your lives better uh, in every aspect, especially for those of you who are developers. Um, and if you are experiencing that value, if, if you are finding this show to be valuable for your life, um, why don't you consider supporting this show by going to developertcom front slash donate. Now, I know not everybody can do this, but for those of you who do find the show to be valuable enough to support it, I appreciate your donation incredibly. Uh, so if you want to join that, that group of people, go to developertcom front slash donate, even the smallest amount is a big deal to me. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And until next time, enjoy your tea.